Good evening and welcome. It's good to see you here. As a co-director with my colleague Peter Althaus, I would like to give you our highlight of the story of the birth of the Center for the Study of Global Pentecostalism. The visible story started in 2010 when the SAU Board of Trustees approved a directive to establish a Center for the Study of Global Pentecostalism. One of the purposes of this center was for the College of Christian Ministries and Religion in collaboration with our other colleges of the university to provide service and to develop research that is committed to empower the Pentecostal Church locally and globally in its mission. Some of the objectives of the center are as follows. Network with Pentecostal and charismatic movements worldwide in order to keep abreast of the strategies of the Holy Spirit. Identify emerging Pentecostal communities with the intent to support and build leadership capacity in global leaders and help them to develop international partnerships. <clears throat> Provide a forum for consultation and seminars in enabling Pentecostal students to sharpen their social functions and their research skills. Call for action research fellows to join with the Center in the study of global Pentecostalism and active research and empowering uh, active research rests at the heart of what we want to have happen with mission trips. And I'm glad to say that we have one uh, mission trip that is, uh, is going to go as we work out the details. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to work with Dr. Robert Menzies in terms of active research in Southern uh, China. Yeah. <laughs> in China. And we have 8 to 12 students who are going to go on that trip. We want to equip Pentecostal leaders and students to collaborate in action research on issues that are impacting the church today that range from the church in multicultural environments to problems of poverty and social injustice, children at risk and human trafficking. You know, the visible story uh, that Peter already mentioned was that we had our first chapter with Dr. Harvey Fox, all this is research professor of divinity at Harvard, and he gave the inaugural address at the center on Thursday, March 57. Cox's groundbreaking work, Fire from Heaven, the rise of Pentecostal spirituality and reshaping of religion in the 21st century fit well with the focus on the global character of Pentecostalism in the inaugural lecture at the center. And now we move this evening into another chapter narrated by Dr. Robert Smith. However, that's the visible story. Let me tell you briefly about the invisible story, the one behind the scenes. At the heart of the in invisible story of SEU's Global Pentecostal Center is Dr. Robert Houlihan and his wife, Carolyn. Without Bob's vision to lead the charge and establish the center for the study of global Pentecostalism, we would not be talking about the story tonight. His vision for this center is rooted deeply in his own calling and his ministry to world missions, where he served from 1966 to 2005. And in that span of years, Bob served in a variety of administrative and leadership roles, but most significantly served as a missionary to Japan for 21 years. The year 2005 was the year when Bob came to SEU to develop a world missions degree program because at that time the school didn't have one. Today, student world mission trips 
run across the spectrum of academic disciplines in the integration of faith, learning, and life. I want to say that we would not be here tonight in this center if it was not for the missional vision of Bapu Land. So please come to the podium, Bob Houlihan, and introduce our guest, Bob Min. Thank you, Dr. Dempster. I'm surprised <laughs> that was not in the script. <laughs> I mean, don't like me. <laughs> I just thought it would be here, and I'm so glad that you're here especially all of you students and some of you that I have the privilege of uh, helping in classes. And I know that other professors have dismissed their classes, and I'm not glad you did. Because <laughs> they told me they're glad that you dismissed their class so they can be here. Uh, this is uh, a, a really a dream come true for uh, some of us in our college. You know, from our dean all the way through the faculty, we, we understand that God is doing something fresh in the world in the development of theologies. You know, we've been so impacted by Western or continental theology, but really the Spirit of God is moving in Asia and Africa and Latin America. Theologies are coming up. It's a global time for the development. It doesn't always fit in our enlightenment, you know, template, so to speak. But they're challenging us, and so we really need to hear these people. We need to study with them, and we need to learn. So this evening, we have one of these scholars who is really schizophrenic. <laughs> he's from the Western world, but he serves in China in an emerging church that is growing up. Uh, you know, many of us in the West, we worry about uh, the decrease of missional activity in Europe. You know, I was, Carol and I were in Japan when they were Canadians and British missionaries, everybody, German. All of a sudden, they all have left. And so you think, oh, what are you going to do? I mean, there's such a need for missionaries, cross-cultural missionaries. You know that four-fifths of the lost people of the world do not live next door to a church. I mean, it's only by cross-cultural missionaries that the gospel gets to them. And so I know many historical churches say, well, we've done our job, and I've even heard some Assemblies of God pastors. I almost... Well, I almost did some body ministry homework. <laughs> he said, we've done the job, we ought to bring everybody home. It, we have just started, friends. We have just started in sending the gospel to the world. And I, I believe this. I believe that God is going to raise up out of mainland China 100,000 missionaries by the end of this century to take the gospel to the world. You know, God is doing something fresh in China. And what you're going to hear tonight is one of those voices that's speaking into these young people. Uh, Dr. Menzi told us earlier today that, that some of the young people that come from his Bible school have gone to our seminary in the Philippines and come back with MDivs and degrees of teaching now. Well, that, I know I say that so fast, but friends, if you knew how significant that was and what God is doing to train up young people in a church that is really growing but needed a lot, a lot of educational help. So the speaker tonight is one that has helped us do that. I've, I've known Bob since he was very young. Uh, his dad was a very close friend of all of ours, Dr. Bill Menzies, and uh, they, Bill came to the seminary when I was really needing help there and uh, just brought in such peace. You know, we have Gordon Fee come every year. We have all these great scholars come because they all knew Bill and they wanted to be there with him. So, uh, this young man, <laughs> at that time at least, <laughs> we, we were, I was telling him later, earlier today, I said, we, we didn't have any PhDs, and we, you know, we, we had a lot of us, but we needed some young scholars, and so the board finally acquiesced to release some funds to help three young men, and uh, Bob and his wife, Joanne, went to Scotland, Aberdeen, and then another one of our, our guys, uh, Gary Long went to Chicago University. Then Juan Sip Ma, who you may have read some of his stuff, I went to Fuller Seminary to do a, a degree in Old Testament. And so they came back, and it, these men coming back actually got our seminary accredited. And it's obviously one of the finest schools in, in Asia. 
And so we are really blessed to have this brother here. Now, I'm going to take the liberty, you know, Bob has written many books. This is a good book, Spirit and Power, that he co-authored with his dad in the year 2000. And I, I was really interested that he referred to this book today and that he's changed or grown beyond this. I'm not really sure. I'm going to heal. But let me just read a paragraph to give you an idea of the quality of the work that comes from this saint of God. He said, to sum up through some redactional activity in Luke 11, 13b, Luke encourages post-Pentecostal disciples to ask for the gift of the Spirit, which for Luke meant open access to the divine Spirit, the source of power that would enable them to be effective witnesses for Christ, providing what we was required in time and need whether it be special knowledge or the ability to powerfully proclaim the gospel of Christ in the face of persecution. Would you welcome Dr. Bob Menzies.